that Susie has started talking about breasts. <laughs> I was worried about that. Now before I start this little journey, uh, I just want to talk to the guys. First, straight guys in the room. Geez, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Okay? I'm even have to consider a new title for my presentation. Maybe I should call this all men are bastards. <laughs> Why men cannot be trusted. And I thought, no, that's not all right. What about this one? Boobs, bums, and legs. Why men are so distracted. Or this one. And it ain't pretty, ladies. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Why men care less about your good time than theirs. What's going on there? No, seriously, ladies and gentlemen, well, today's presentation does come uh, with viewer discretion warning. It's definitely not going to be PC. Come on, thank you. Uh, it may contain truths about men that some women may find disturbing. Okay? And because I'm a bloke and I'm talking about bloke stuff, it's very likely that I might break down into some less than PC language myself. So please forgive me for that. Let's rock on. I've got a lot to get through in 20 minutes. And there's this clock thing there telling me how long I've taken. So some opening remarks. To start with, then we're going to uh, we've got to find out what all the things could possibly be. So we do a little introspection exercise, and then of course we're going to do a quantification, and finally we're going to fire up the old polygraph. It's not a real polygraph, as you know, but it's a it's a driver technique. So we'll look at that and we'll hopefully finish with some dignified thoughts. So the sequel to my brilliant idea, as you all know, in 2010, to much fanfare. Uh, I used the commercially drive importance driver technique to uncover what women really wanted from men but wouldn't necessarily tell you. The premise, of course, was that uh, we're not always able to articulate, uh, introspect and articulate what we want, uh, so, and what, what we want and what motivates us, so it therefore uh, follows that we may not be able to articulate uh, accurately what it is that we look for in a partner. So the method revealed some interesting results. Um, with women's apparent uh, understand, understatement of physical attraction, getting a lot of uh, attention in the press. So this year, I'm back to uh, look at the discrepancies between what men say they want or don't want and what they're actually attracted to. Now, when I started this process, you might all remember last year, I, I finished the presentation, if you saw it, saying, well, we all know it's going to say sex in every box, right? And then when I started the project, I thought, well, maybe not. Maybe this is an opportunity to exonerate the male race. And so I was hopeful. Hopeful. <laughs> Will I be disappointed? Now, we all know how I did this, but if you haven't seen it, I've got to show you. It's by way of graphical uh, representation. Basically, create a set of attributes, describe what the turn-ons and turn-offs, ask men to rate these on a 10-point scale, create a derived measure, compare the two, look for the gaps. Now, you all get the stated measure. That's pretty easy, 1 to 10. What about this derived measure? Well, again, that's pretty easy. It's something that we've all done and we've all been using probably for years. Um, but basically what we do is we showed men a bunch of women and said, how attractive is this woman? We showed them a lot of different women. Basically, they gave a score out of 10. Then we asked them to rate those women on different attributes. So good looking, has a good sense of humour, she's intelligent. This is not real data, by the way. And basically then what we do is we say, okay, take all the women who were said to be good looking, put them in a basket. When I did the men's presentation, it was a bucket, but I thought I'd show some respect today. <laughs> Add up those scores, and you get a derived, uh, take an average, and you get a derived attractiveness score for uh, good looking, good sense of humour, repeat the process. So does that make sense to everyone? Pretty clear? So essentially, what is the, what is the, what is the associated attractiveness score of women who are said to be good looking or have nice boobs? Oops, I've So, we have to go and hunt and find out what all these attributes might actually be. So we used the same process that we did. We had the blueprint, so I didn't see any reason to really change it. And so we went out to a thousand men uh, nationally on the uh, nine awards panel of all ages and marital status, did all the usual things, and we asked them four questions. We said, when you're looking for a partner, and let's, uh, let me just remind you, this is about partners. This is not about picking up at the pub on Friday night. 
This is about a life partner. What's most important in a partner? Who fits this bill in the public eye? What's a real turnoff in a partner? And who fits this bill in the public eye? And we added another question this year, uh, which was basically what would be nice to have and nice not to have. So we're just trying to elicit some of those additional uh, attributes. And because we, we felt that in the women's study we may have polarised the attributes just a little bit, and there was a little bit of a, a little bit of a clip. So we were working to try and uh, to get that, uh, and I think we achieved that. All right. So give a little sneak preview. What do you think the guys said? Here's a tag cloud of the verbatim responses of what guys say they want from women. Shock horror. Where's the word sex? Where are the boobs, the bums? Nowhere. I'm starting to feel pretty good at this stage. I'm thinking, well, maybe we're going to be exonerated. Sense of humour, personality. Okay, looks is there. But intelligence, interest, attractive. I thought, well, maybe the second question, maybe the nice to have will reveal this. When you say to blokes what it would be nice to have, they say, nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice eyes, nice hair. And they replayed some of those other things that we saw uh, before. Now, who do we think, who do we think is going to be the girl that represents these qualities? Anyone? You might remember Hugh Jackman was off the stratosphere last year. Jennifer Bloody Hawkins. <laughs> hey, ladies. Now, we've got some others there. The new suspects are there, and it does look like one of those lists that are around. Somebody said, wife? That's nice. Don't know what sort of public life their wives are in, but we'll not worry about that. And they tended to be actors and actresses. Okay? Flip side. What aren't they looking for? Oh, this is getting a bit nasty now, isn't it? Smoking. Rude. Self, la selfish. Loud. Fat. Bad. Mmm. And on the other list? Bad. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I have the utmost respect for the Prime Minister's office, I have to say. But right now, just could not get a sandwich about <laughs> picking. Number one. Bad girls are there, Lindsay Larvin, and Pauline Hanson. Now, I know you're all laughing about Charlie Sheen, right? I know that's where you're laughing at. I was going to take it out, but that would be playing with the data. Guys are just so bloody literal. You know? I said, what are you looking for in a woman, and who re what are you looking for in a woman, and who represents these qualities? So basically, Charlie doesn't represent a very good candidate as a wife. <laughs> Men, pick up your game. Let's move on. So, we then took all that data, those thousands and thousands of responses, and myself and our call director sat down, and we did the usual thing, and we got the distillation going, and we distilled that down into a list of 40 attributes. You might recall the women had 30 attributes. Guys aren't a more complex tapestry. It's not about that. It's because we added an extra question. Okay? And we did the same thing with the detractor statements as we did last year. So we came up with 40. It doesn't really matter what they are. You'll see what they are shortly. Then we had to pick 24 public females for our How Attracted Are You to These Women test, which we handpicked from stage one. So they were all called right. And lots and lots and lots and lots of women were mentioned in there. So you don't have to be one of these 24. Half were from the good list, half were from the bad list, and the selection was made on a basis of a good mix of actors, uh, sports people, celebrities and politicians, etc. And there is our list, and hopefully there's at least one bird there you'd like to be partnered with, and one you would not. Poor old Amy. So, stage two, quantification. <coughs> So we went back to another 2,000 respondents, this time again recruited from the nine rewards panel over a six day period, did the usual things, weighted the data, uh, you know, had quotas on age and area. We had to split the sample because we had 80 attributes, 40 good, 40 bad, 24 candidates, a lot of tasks for our respondents to do. So we split them in half, matched them, they did 12 public eye partner candidates on attractiveness, a total of 40 each, uh, and then rated them on 12 public eye partner candidates. And this time we simply said, 
is this well-known person appealing to you or not on a 10-point scale? How appealing or a turn-off are each of these attributes? And which of these attributes apply to these well-known people? Now, as you all know, this is not central to my study, and I'm not out here trying to create a list of top chicks, but everyone wants to know, so we put the list up. Here are the scores that we got for uh, top women. Now, Jennifer Hawkins is, like uh, Hugh Jackman was, in a bit of a stratosphere of her own. Basically, the green box is top three box, eight, nine, or ten. A majority of guys, 63%, think that she is an eight plus with a score of, of 7.8. Then we've got Natalie Portman and Megan Gale in the second tier, and then you know, the usual suspects all the way down to uh, pink at number 10. The bad list, and again, just out of respect, I'm not even going to mention Amy Winehouse. Pauline Hanson. She up a bit when I saw that. Uh, at the bottom of the list, 1.92. Julia Gillard, 2.2. Quinton Bryce? 2.6, that's a bit unfair. And obliged it a little bit better. But what we found, guys, is that when we did this study with the guys, you might remember Tony Abbott was rated poorly, um, our Prime Minister at the time, or what he'd just been removed, Rudd was rated poorly. So essentially being in public life doesn't appear to be great credentials to be attractive as a partner. Right, let's get to the gritty stuff. Let's get to what men say they want and what they don't want. So when we asked them, what were the things that they actually valued? Look at these guys, are pretty, pretty happy, aren't they? This is what we want, guys. We want togetherness. We want honest and trustworthy. We want loving and supportive. Loving and supportive of me, right? That's the difference. Women say loving and caring. Guys say loving and supportive of me. I think the guys know the difference. I'm not sure if the girls do. Love and respect me for what I am. <laughs> Good sense of humour, kind and caring to others. These blokes aren't bad, are they? That's a reasonable list, is it not? Down to earth, easy going, I am. Attracted to a sexual yeah. She's my best friend. She has an attractive personality. That looks like a pretty good list. And in fact, a lot of those attributes we shared with women as well, not in exactly the same order. And there's the full distribution if you want to see it. And, you know, that's a state of importance, uh, essentially. Uh, you know, she's good cookies in there somewhere, um, but I'm looking at the extremes. It's rated around about a seven. And these guys don't look too happy, do they? What men say they don't want. They don't want dishonesty, unfaithfulness, and untrustworthiness, and neither do women. It was the number one for both of our groups. Who wants that? Poor personal hygiene, especially bad teeth, bad breath, and bloody body odor. Inconsistent and rude. Ignorant, superficial and boring. She has addictions. She has an unattractive personality or no personality at all. She's arrogant. She thinks she's better than bloody everybody else. She's lazy and ambitious. She's got absolutely no purpose in life. She's got a bloody bad attitude to me. And she's negative and she has no passion for life. Ladies and gentlemen. I mean, lot, aren't they? And there's our distribution. We've got a much nicer kit. But this is what they say they want and what they say they don't want. Are they telling the truth? What do we think? Let's fire up the polygraph. So what we did here, we took our 40 state of attractive and turn-off attribute ratings, and we took our derived attribute ratings, and we basically uh, standardised them, stitched them together, and then basically looked at state versus derived on uh, traditional four-quadrant uh, distribution. And you can see they kind of fell into two quadrants, roughly sort of a Kano analysis. But what I like to do is add this area of alignment, and that defines my first set of attributes. As we move down that line, we're basically seeing uh, attributes that where they say what they want and what they're actually attracted to align. But we also have understated attractor attributes, overstated turn-off attributes, overstated attractor attributes, and understated turn-off. Got to be a little bit double-jointed to understand how that works with overstated turn-off attributes, but I'll leave that with you. Much better way of looking at this is to look at it using this, the polygraph and spider method, which means that we essentially take those derived measures and we sort them from highest to lowest, which is the blue line, and then we plot on top of that the red line, which is what I'm actually into or not into, ladies and gentlemen. And it's pretty squiggly, just like the women. 
Let's start with the core stuff before we get to the funny stuff, right? <coughs> so, where were those areas of alignment? Well, on the core attractors, it was loving and supportive of me. Down to earth, easy going, nice eyes, nice smile, adventurous, enjoys new things, good conversationalist, and she's got a steady, well paid job. I called this, she's a good sort. Now, I got in a little bit of trouble with John Laws this morning about good sorts. He now thinks he can go around the town saying that girls are good sorts, left, right and centre. I said, John, that's not exactly what I had in mind. But anyway, look at the core detractors. There's lots of them. Right? Men have a lot more things they don't like than they do like. And the list is not pretty. Poor personal hygiene, unattractive personality, no personality, doesn't look after herself, bad attitude, men, angry or aggressive, loud, and she swears. I struggled to find a name for this. I did have another name for it, but I decided I was barking up the wrong tree. So I called it, she's negative and doesn't care. It's a joke, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Won't be doing that one again. Okay, let's have a look at the attractors and see where those big gaps are. Okay, we've got some pretty big stuff going on here, ladies and gentlemen. What is that down there, number one? Right down there, she has great boobs. <laughs> it's almost as high as higher than the stated one of any stated one. Number two, she has a nice bum. <laughs> boobs and bums, ladies and gentlemen. She's focused on fashion and appearance. Number three, let's have a look at that. Okay, can you tell which one of these guys is the boob, the boob guy and the bum guy? Bum guy? Bum guy? So she has great boobs, she has a nice bum, she's focused on her fashion and her appearance. What's that all about? That's what we call packaging, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Dress it up, and then I'll be sexually attracted to you. And please, come to the footy with me occasionally, or at least let me watch the footy. If she wants a family and relates to kids, I thought, hey, mate, what's going on? That doesn't quite fit there. She relates to kids. Yeah. You look after the kids, because I sure don't want to. Be my best friend. Legs. Good looking. And she has a physical characteristic I find attractive. Something special for me. While you're being supportive of me. With your great boobs and your nice bum. You could sort you. Yeah. Areas of compromise. What are the things that guys actually uh, said were more important than they actually were? Well, if you've got... If you could possibly dial back a little bit on being educated, self-confident, independent financially. You could drop back a little bit, dial a bit back on your personal appearance. You could cut your hair! <laughs> what about this? She enjoys sex? Okay, so she's a good sort, and she's got great boobs, blah, blah, blah. I don't give a fuck if she's enjoying it or not. <laughs> Family oriented, optimistic and happy, who cares? Serotonin. <laughs> Sociable and outgoing. Oh, but here's some good news. Tolerant of others and non judgmental. You can start bitching as much as you like, shimmy shimmy. Right? Detractors. Let's focus on that. So we've got, again, two areas here. We've got areas of toleration. These may be, men may tolerate these. Because these may not be as bad as what women say. As what men say, sorry. As addictions, extravagant and waste money, go shopping. If you're a good sort with the assets, you can smoke, you can be fake, you can even get something fake for me. Controlling and possessive. Oops. Now, the other side of this, these are things that are actually worse. Okay? And it's not pretty, and I'm not going to comment about it, I'm just going to show it to you. Alright? So these things are more of a turn off than what men say. Overweight. No good in bed. Talks too much! And talks too much with that unattractive, annoying voice! And just generally physically unattractive. So ladies and gentlemen, you have it. There it is. Here's your little uh, ready reckoner, guys. 
bit like an onion, at the core, areas of the line, I call it a good sort, love and support me, down to earth, attractive smile, eyes, adventurous, new things. I'll compromise on uh, well-educated self-confidence, basically on your independence and confidence, and you will delight me with your sexiness and your compatibleness. That's a word. On the downside, I don't want you to be negative and don't care. I really don't like that. Poor hygiene, unattractive personality, negative, etc. But I will tolerate some addictions, a little bit of shopping, some smoking, some fake something, controlling and possessive. You can be a bit bossy with vices. But what I do not want is unsexy and repulsive. Now I'm over time. So I probably should wrap this up as quickly as possible. So, ladies and gentlemen, when I started this, I hypothesised actually that men would be far more uh, willing to express their love of all things women. Uh, and certainly this study confirms the importance of, of sex and uh, sex and things. But I was surprised to find that it was far less likely to be overtly admitted to their sexual affliction. Let's face it, it is an affliction than we would have expected. In fact, they're more likely to claim attributes like togetherness, honesty, love, trust and support and as being most important. Now, it begs the question, has it always been this way or are we now all victims of political correctness? And we're still thinking about it 180 times a day. Maybe. More specifically, the study suggests the core of what we want is a good sort. Although we like our partners to be confident with their appearance and personality, good education, etc. We may be willing to compromise on these things. But central to this study, just like in the women's study, was despite what men say, you cannot underestimate the power of sexual attraction and specifically women's most salient physical assets, i.e. their boobs and their bums. You can delight them further, though, by knowing about packaging and dressing it up. Certainly more than guys are willing to say. On the flip side, what real men really don't want to be turned off by are those attributes that we could loosely term negative and doesn't care. We want our partners not to be bossy and have vices, but if you meet other requirements, then maybe you can get away with those things. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, there's more I can do with this. I can cut it a thousand different ways. I can look at married, partner versus non-partner, etc. Uh, but really, the great thing that, that uh, now, more importantly, is I have both sets of data and I can start putting them side by side. So if you can stomach some more next year, I'd love to come back and do that for you. Thank you very much.